Welcome to the first of our Farm to School Procurement Tutorials. Put Local on Your Tray is supported by Yukon Extension, Food Corps, and the State Department of Education. Today we will walk you through the planning steps to successful purchasing of local products for your school food service programs. We hope to give you some strategies that can ease your concerns about meeting all the expectations of USDA. In this tutorial, we will give you a quick overview of the basic guidelines for purchasing locally grown farm fresh products for your school food service programs. We will cover purchasing thresholds, both those determined by USDA and those set by your local district, and what you need to think about in planning for celebrating local foods in your cafeterias. We will also look at clever ways to make the procurement guidelines work for you. USDA has designed three ways for district food service directors to buy product for programs receiving federal funding from USDA. Whether purchasing foods or equipment or supplies, these thresholds and purchasing methods apply. USDA has set purchasing thresholds, also known as upper and lower limits for each of the three levels of purchases. The small purchase threshold used for all purchases over $150,000, shown in the orange box here, would require a formal bid process using either sealed bids or competitive proposals. Sealed bids typically are awarded based on price only. Competitive requests for proposals allow the writer to include specifics such as delivery and quality and food specifications to be included in the award analysis as long as it is clearly defined in the bid. Under $150,000, but over $3,500, purchases may be made using an informal bidding method, which requires either verbal or written quotes from at least three vendors when there are at least three vendors available. This method requires you to do your due diligence in identifying farmers and distributors who are interested in and qualified for participating, but also allows you to develop a list of expectations, including specifications, delivery methods, and payment options, and share them with selected vendors you have approved as qualified. You do not need to publicly post this type of request but simply contact those farms you have identified. This is ideal for the seasonal items you regularly use, such as apples, strawberries, and squash. Micro-purchases can be made when the purchase will not exceed $3,500. This method allows a purchaser to determine the best qualified vendor, such as a local farmer who can provide your needs for this purchase at a reasonable price, without getting additional quotes. This method is ideal for specialty items grown in your area that are a one-time purchase, such as blueberries or corn in the first week of school. Recent clarification has been made by USDA that the micro-purchases are not aggregate. This means individual purchases count as one purchase. But Districts must show that they have allowed for fair and even distribution among qualified vendors when using the micro-purchases in multiple times. Details on these can be found on the State Department of Education website. In 2014, Lucy Lyman, School Garden Nutrition Coordinator for New London Schools, reached out to our local farm using a micro-purchase and continued to use this farm for special purchases in the following years. This year, the district has entered into a year-long contract for the lettuces the farm can provide. Lucy told us that the baby steps taken in 2014 have reaped great opportunities this year. Connecticut has not set statewide thresholds for purchasing. As directors in Connecticut, you are only expected to adhere to the USDA and district established thresholds. Although USDA has limits for your purchasing, your district also sets thresholds for all purchases. And in the event that the direct district has stricter standards, 
you must follow those standards. Typically, local districts do set stricter thresholds, especially limits for the use of formal bidding practices and if and when a micropurchase can be used. So reach out to your purchasing coordinator or business manager to get the details for your district. No matter what the th thresholds are, there is always a way to make purchasing work for bringing local farm to school to your district. Planning how you are, will approach this is key to your success. So let's consider what you should think about first. Your menu should be helpful in identifying what you will want to purchase as local. Additionally, special events, taste testings, harvest of the month, and other school-driven events can guide you. Then consider when you are serving it and when you need it delivered to your kitchen. Consider including in your requests the time between harvest and delivery to your school as it can be key to keeping your product at its freshest. Quantities will be dependent on several things, but most important would be whether it is a taste test with a limited number of students participating or a menu item planned for everyone. And then decide details like delivery to your kitchen, the pack count, and size and specifications for the item. A form with many of these questions for planning can be found on our Put Local on Your Tray website under the Procurement tab. And if you need help getting this organized so you can begin introducing Farm to School in your district, please feel free to call or email Mary Ann Lopez, our Procurement Specialist. Coming soon will be our next tutorial, which will co cover geographic preferences a way of defining optimal choices while keeping things open and competitive. And we will have a full lineup of future tutorials tailored to guide you through this procurement process. Marianne's contact information is here for you to use as well as on our website. And just a reminder, if you have not done so already, reach out to us at Put Local on Your Trade to sign up and get the newsletter and access to all the great marketing ideas to help you get started, as well as some positive social media exposure. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you right back here real soon for our next tutorial, which will take you one step closer to successful farm to school purchasing.